Hello friends, welcome to Electronic Circuit Hub. So today we are going to understand about the design and simulation of 16 megahertz crystal oscillator. So we are going to understand how you're going to design the 16 megahertz crystal oscillator and how you're going to simulate the 16 megahertz crystal oscillator in Alta Spice. Then let us first understand how you're gonna design the 16 megahertz crystal oscillator. So in order to design the 16 megahertz crystal oscillator, I have used CMOS technology. So if I say the CMOS technology, that means I have one P MOS connected here and one N MOS connected here. If you look at now, the gate of both NMOS and PMOS are tied together. So gate are both NMOS and PMOS are tied together. And if you look at now here, the, the source of your PMOS is connected with the 5 volt supply rail. Okay. So don't forget to connect it. It is connected with the 5 volt supply rail and the drain of PMOS and the drain of NMOS, again they are tied together, again they are tied together, they are shorted and uh, if you look at down, the source of NMOS is connected to the ground. That is how we form a CMOS circuit. CMOS circuit is nothing but it is a combination of PMOS and NMOS. So this is basically a CMOS circuit and the source of PMOS is connected to the 5 volt and the source of NMOS is connected to the ground and the drain of PMOS and the drain of NMOS are tied together. That means they are shorted together. Okay, they are shorted. So what you can do here is now, now if you look at now this shorting point, this shorting point we have connected at this side okay and here i have i have connected the crystal oscillator okay so if you look at the internal architecture or internal parasitic components which are there to form the crystal oscillator if you look at the equivalent circuit of the crystal oscillator that is how it looks like so in the crystal oscillator it has the inductance so I model this by using L1. It has the series capacitor. If you look at here, it has the series inductor L1, series capacitor C1 and the series register R1. And in parallel with this parasitic components, we have again one more capacitance and this is C2. The value of L1 is 19.8 millihenry. The value of C1 is 4.9 farad and the R1 is R1 is 100 ohm and the C2 is 3 picofarad. And now if you look at in order to operate, in order to drive the crystal, you need to connect the load capacitance. And in this case, the value of load capacitance, which are which are the C3 and C4 are the load capacitance and the value of the load capacitance is 22 picofarad. So C3 value is 22 picofarad and c4 value is 22 picofarad now so this is about how you gonna how you gonna model the crystal oscillator in your alt spice so don't forget it this is the specific block to model your crystal oscillator in alt spice and uh, it has the parasitic components it has the inductor capacitor and register and then you have to also connect the load capacitance which is C3 and C4 in order to drive your crystal oscillator. Okay, what next now? So if you look at now here, so let me go on view and zoom fit. So now if you look at here in parallel with the crystal oscillator, I have connected one the register that is R3 and then if you look at this side, the left side, this is connected to the gate of PMOS and NMOS. They are shorted together and it is connected to the gate. And I, let's say I label this, I name this as a XTAL1, crystal one. And again, this side I name, this is the output side. 
So XTAL2, this is your output side here. You can write it as an output and at the gate side you have the input which is which is turning on and off to this C, which is the input of this CMOS circuitry. Okay. Now there is a very two important parameter if you look at the R3 and R2. Why do we need R3 there and why do we need R2 there? Let us understand quickly what is the need of R3 and what is the need of R2. So if you look at R3, R3 is connected in parallel with your crystal oscillator, right? Crystal oscillator. And why do we need R3? The value of R3 is 10 mega ohm. It's a very big value. And why do we need the, the R3 is the reason to use R3 is, R3 is it, it, it gives the DC bias path to your crystal oscillator. That means it works as a feedback biasing. It helps in the oscillator, crystal oscillator oscillation or it helps in startup condition. It helps in startup condition and then once startup has happened, it maintains the DC operating point. It maintains the continuous stable uh, output. So the purpose of R3 is to give the DC bias path, helps oscillator startup helps in startup condition and it also maintain the DC operating point. What is the purpose of R2? Very important again to understand why do we need R2? So the value here, the, C, uh, the 220 ohm series register protects the crystal and improves the signal quantity, uh, sing signal quality. That is why we required R2 and uh, the use of R2 is it is Damping the reflection of your crystal frequency, crystal oscillator reduces the inrush current because you have the capacitor parasitics. It reduces the inrush current and at the same time, it limits the drive power level of your crystal. So if you have small value resistance, the R2, it damps the reflection, reduce the inrush and also limit the drive level of your crystal oscillator so hope you uh, you now understood how you're gonna design the crystal oscillator 16 megahertz crystal oscillator in your lt spice now straight away i'm gonna run the simulation and let's see how the waveform looks like so go at simulate button and directly run the simulation uh, so that we can see and i'm gonna probe it at the output side let's see what is going to happen your simulation is running now and this is now you look at your oscillation is ramping up your oscillation is ramping up and this we call it as a startup condition this is your nothing but this is your startup condition of your oscillator this is the startup condition of your oscillator and now if you look at your oscillator is getting attaining the proper oscillation proper waveform okay it has got the maximum amplitude so this portion we call it as a startup condition this is the startup condition and now it once your oscillator attain the maximum voltage level it has if you look at it has proper stable output okay now what we can do it let me zoom it so that you will see how it looks like how the waveform looks like okay so let me zoom this and let us see the waveform okay pingo if you look at the waveform the startup has happened this is your startup point startup has has happened now it has got it has attained the proper oscillator oscillation it has attained the maximum amplitude whatever it has to be now let me zoom this and let me show you the waveform so what i'm gonna do is let's zoom it let's zoom it and let's see now you can see the see the oscillator waveform and if i i add the cursor here let me add the cursor and uh, what you can see here so this is my cursor and uh, let's see what is the frequency what is the oscillator frequency which we are getting now okay now if you look at here now if you look at it is around 16.62 megahertz this you understood how you're gonna design the crystal oscillator in lt spice and uh, if you have any further question on this feel free to ask me in comment section thanks for watching this video